Hello everyone, let's talk about how to factor polynomials with four turns by grouping. We'll do this three examples here. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the first example. And I would say that this is an easier example compared to the later ones that we're going to see. It's really because there was a plus sign here separating the first two turns and separating the last two turns. Okay, so when we factor by grouping, we are going to first, we are going to write it as two groups. So we put parentheses. And then this is what we have. So there was there are two groups right here, and then there was a plus that we put in the middle. Okay. And then what happened is that we are going to put the first two turns in the first group and then the last two turns into the second group. So the first two turns we have x cubed minus 3x squared. Okay. And then the last two turns we are going to have 4x minus 12. Okay, so what happened is that we are going to factor the greatest common factor, the GCF, from both groups. So next step, we are going to pull out the GCF, which will be x squared, because we can pull out the x squared from the x cube and the x squared from the 3x squared. So we can pull that out. So we get x squared, and then we are going to get x minus 3. So that's our first turn, and then there was a the plus right here, so we'll just we are not going to write it yet. Let's look at what we have here. So what happened is that we also want to pull out the GCF here. And then as you can see, there was a four here, there was a 12 here. So the GCF would be a four. So we can pull out the four, then parentheses, and then we are left with four times something is four X. So we would have X and then minus. So four times negative something gives us negative 12. So that must be negative three. And so now if this problem can be factored by using this technique here, then we should be having the same factor. And as you can see that that's, those are the same factors right here, x minus three. So right now we can treat that as the GCF because there are two times right here. So we can factor the x minus three. And then we are left with what? We are left with x squared after we factor the x minus three. So we get the x squared. And then from the second turn here, after we pull out the x minus three, we are left with the four. So we get the four here. And then we are finished. And then you can see that this is still a quadratic here. And then you may say, can we continue to factor this one? This one, because it's x squared plus four. So that's the sum of two squares. So this is not factorable over the set of real numbers. Okay, so this is the factorization for this expression here. Now let's look at the next example. Second example, we are going to do it the same way. We are going to first write down two groups right here. So put two groups with blanks, and then there was a plus sign in the middle. And then you may say, shouldn't we put a minus sign right here? Because the third turn has a minus sign in front of the four. We are still going to put the plus sign right here. And that's how we are going to start by factor by grouping. This will help avoiding mistakes. Okay, so always put a plus sign right here. And then we are really just going to copy the first two turns in here, and then copy the last two turns in here, including the signs. Okay, so first group, we are going to get 3x squared minus 3xy. Okay, and then the second group, the second group, we are going to copy the last two turns, including the minus sign. So we have negative 4x plus 4y. The reason for why we're including the signs is really because we put a plus right here. So that will allow us to include all the signs in here when we are, when we are putting the, uh, the turns into the groups. And this will help us avoid having to worry about the, dealing with the signs too early. Okay, so now that's what we do. And then just like the first example, we are going to factor the GCF from the first group and then also factor the GCF from the second group. So we are going to get, well, let's see what's going on here. For the first group, the GCF would be three because they both have a factor of three and then we can also factor out the X. So we are going to get three X as the GCF. And then after factor out the three X from the three X square, we are going to get the X here. And then there was a minus sign, right? Because we factor out just three X and then the three X is pull out, right? So we will just have the Y here. Okay, so that's the first turn. And then now for the second group, then what happens is that because we have a negative four here as the coefficient. And so what we're gonna do is that instead of just factoring out the four, we actually also want to factor out uh, the negative four. And then you may say, why do we do that? It's really because, think about this. When we factor the negative four, we are gonna get X and Y. And then we also should have X and Y here. And what happened is that the coefficient for the X should be a positive one. And so in order for 
this technique to work, we actually need to pull out the negative four completely so that we can have a coefficient of one in front of the x. Okay, so we pull out the negative four. Then now we have the group, and then let's fill inside this. So uh, if we factor the negative four, we are left with just the x. Okay, so see that both x's have a coefficient of negative, uh, positive one. Okay, and then now what about the second term? The second term right here, if we pull out the negative four, because this is positive four, so when we pull out the negative four, we need to think about negative four times what gives us positive four, that should be negative one. So it, we gotta change the sign here because we factor a negative number. So negative four times negative one gives us positive four. And then we are just left with just the y here. And so as you can see here, we have the same factor. So this x minus y can be treated as a GCF. So we factor out the x minus y. And then after we factor out the x minus y from both turns right here, then we are left with 3x from the first turn. So we have 3x right here. And then what about the second turn? The second turn, uh, after we pull out the x minus y, we are left with just minus 4. So include the sign, right? So that's why dealing with the sign is actually really important. So pull out that negative 4. And then we are done with, we're, we're done with this factorization here. Okay, so let's look at the next example. Okay, this time we are going to try a slightly more difficult example. And as you can see here, there is a GCF that we can factor out from all the terms. There's a negative 15, there is a negative 30, there is a positive 5, positive 10. So we should be able to pull out a 5 or a negative 5 from all the terms. And also there is a y here, y square, y and y square. So we can also pull out the y. So what we do is that we are going to factor the greatest common factor. And then after that, we will continue with the factor by grouping. So first, we are going to factor out negative 5y. And then you may say, why do we factor out a negative 5 instead of just a 5? Because our first term right here has the negative 15 as the coefficient. So that's why we are going to factor the negative 5. And then we can also factor the y. So that's our greatest common factor. And then let's write down what's left in there. So we have when we factor out negative 5y, we are going to get positive 3 because 3 times negative 5 will give us negative 15. So we are going to get 3. And then the y is already pulled out, so we only will get the x squared. Okay, so next turn, the second turn here, when we pull out the negative 5, then we should be getting positive 6 here, uh, because 6 times 5, 6 times negative 5 will give us negative 30. And so the y is pulled out, so we are left with just 6xy. Okay, we do the same for the other one. So pull out the negative 5, negative 5 times something will give us positive 5. So we need to multiply by negative 1. And then the y got factored out, so we will only have the x here. Okay, continue. So next one, this is also positive, but because we factor out a negative sign here, so we can, we need to have also a negative here. So negative times negative will give us the positive. And then there is some number that we multiply by 5, we should get 10. So that number should be 2. A y is factor of y squared, so we will just get y here. Okay, so that's the GCF, and then those are the stuff that's left. Now we are going to factor this by grouping. So we are going to do negative 5y. Okay, so I'm going to use brackets here, and then I will put two groups in here, just like before. And then what we do is that we are going to fill in the terms for the two groups. So we get 3x squared plus 6xy. So that's our first group. And then our second group will be negative x minus 2y. And just one thing to remember is that don't forget the signs because we put a plus here. So uh, we will just copy, okay, as you can see here, just copy the first two turns into the first group, copy the last two turns into the second. Group. Okay, so from now we are going to factor out the GCF from each group. So we are going to get negative 5y. And then what happens is that we can factor a 3 from the 3 and the 6, and then we can also factor the x. So we can factor 3x, and then we are left with what? We are left with just x here, plus we factor the 3 from the 6, so we're going to get a 2. The x is gone, so we will just have the y here. Okay, you can always just double check by distributing the 3x back into those two turns in here so that you can see whether you're getting the expression from the previous step. Okay, so for this one, there was a negative one as the coefficient in front of the x, right? So we would also want to factor out that just negative one because there is no other stuff that we can factor out. So just factor out negative one. So we factor out the negative ones, that plus sign becomes a negative, And then we would have x plus 2y. 
And then as you can see that we do get the same factor here. So that means we can factor out the x plus 2y as the GCF for the, this two turns, right? So we will have negative 5y and then we factor the x plus 2y. And then after we factor out the x plus 2y, we would need to write down what's left. And so there is the 3x that we need to put here. So we have the 3x. And then there was the um, there was the minus, right? So there was a minus. Minus 1. There was no lumber right here, so we assume that's 1. So we just get 3x minus 1. And so that's finished, as you can see here. So this is a slightly more difficult example compared to the previous two because we have a... Uh, GCF that we need to factor out at the beginning. Then you may say, can we just go with factor by grouping at the beginning without worrying about the GCF? Uh, the answer is yes, but after you are done with the factor by grouping, you still would need to factor out the GCF to factor this expression completely. So that's it for these three examples, and I will continue to do more factoring videos. Okay, so thank you for watching. I will see you next time.